Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. This is part two of Infographics First 24 Hours in Prison. You're gonna enjoy this because this is a little bit about your celly. Before I get started, please check us out on member programs on YouTube, Patreon. Please go to Discord. Uh, the podcast is doing great. Please go to our podcast, which is the real deal with me, Larry Lawton. Also, please, please check out our merch. Check out my book, Gangster Redemption. And let's jump right into this video. This is going to be good. Since the new prisoner doesn't know what to expect, the first interaction could be pretty tense and go multiple ways. The guards may watch for a few moments, but once the door is shut behind them, the new cellmates need to figure it out for themselves. Depending on what time it is, the new inmate might get put to work immediately. When you get to a yard, you will not do a thing. You will go to your, your cell, probably make your bed. That's what I would do. I'd get to my cell, wherever it is, I would make my bed really nice, take a break, look around, probably just go out front door of the cell, look around, watch what people are wearing on their feet, see the interactions. You can feel tension in a prison. So I would feel the prison. I usually got to know people. After I was in for a while, someone would know me. Oh man, that's Lawton. That's that dude who fought the prison system. That's that dude. You might know a guy or two from the plane or the bus that you were on and you got to talk to him and you knew him. So you might kind of like feel him out and see where he's at. So you, you have like uh, interaction with somebody. You're not going to work. You won't be working in that prison for a couple of weeks, maybe a week. Two weeks. If it's time for chores, they could be assigned to wash dishes in the kitchen, or maybe they'll be sent to the laundry room, where they'll fold freshly washed linens. Since they haven't shown the guards what they're capable of yet, the new prisoner will probably be asked to do menial tasks until work time is over, and they can move on to the next part of the day. That is, uh, again, not true. Not one thing in that true. Your first 24 hours, you are not working. Period. Period. Never happen. The new inmate will probably sit alone for their first meal. Hopefully, they will be left to eat in peace, but this is not always the case. Depending on the prison and its inhabitants, they could be introduced to the hierarchy of the members at their new home. If left alone, the first meal is normally eaten by a new prisoner in silence, as they contemplate the predicament they found themselves in. Now, going to chow. There are certain tables for certain groups. I've watched a man get stabbed for sitting in the wrong area. You'll see it. If you know anything about just understanding prisons, you're going to see where the groups go and what they go. There will be a group or an area for what, you know, they call them non-associations of people. Usually like uh, uh, the dirty white boys will have their one table. The bloods will have a table or two, depending on the size of their groups. Uh, and they, you'll, you'll see that. And your cell guy before chow is going to tell you that. Hey, you know, you've associated, no, no, nothing. Okay, yeah, you, you, well, come to me with chow. Someone will, you follow someone to chow. You'll go with a guy that you, you know is not affiliated with a guy, kind of a geeky kind of guy you want to look at him, or a law library guy. You'll see and you'll, you'll get that feel. That is just reading people. I always tell young people that one of the best skills you can have in life is communication skills and reading people, and you'll be able to read people. At some point in the afternoon, the inmate will be given recreation time. They're likely halfway through their first 24 hours in prison at this point. And if everything has gone smoothly, they've only been violated by the prison guard during the strip search. And they're not violated by the guards during the strip search. I've never seen that again. So that just kind of got me a little bit off on this. Uh, now you do can go to the yard. After chow, you go to the yard. And most people who just get off the bus do get on the yard. They want to go to the yard. You want to walk. You've been locked up for X amount of time in a county jail. You want to get out. You want to stretch your legs. You want to feel sun. You want to feel the air. So you will go to the yard and everybody on that yard will know that you just got off the bus. You're going to be in what they call Bobo's. Bobo sneakers is the blue sneakers you see. Most people are going to be in boots. But when you get out of R&D, you're already dressed in boots. The blue Bobo sneakers. You got on an orange jumpsuit, and they'll tell you to go to laundry. When you get out of R&D, you go to your cell, and you're in an orange jumpsuit. Now, everybody's got khakis on. So, you, of course, you're known. So, now, when you go there, they're going to tell you, you know, when you get there, the next day, you go to laundry on the yard and get your boots, get your underwear, get your khakis. You get that from the prison. Well, they don't give you that in the R&D. 
So you're in an orange jumps, everybody in the prison knows you're brand new. The rumors, the, the, the talking starts, who's that? Does anybody know what group, where's he from? Again, when you're somebody who's been in the prison system like myself for a while, uh, you, you know somebody on the, on the yard in most prisons I've ever been to. And uh, if not, you know them right away, where you've been. Oh, you're from New York, who you with, what, you know, what's your charge, they, you know, kind of that kind of stuff. And people get to know. Again, it depends on the facility. But oftentimes, there will be some sort of outdoor space for the inmates to spend recreational time in. But you're not going to no rec yard with weights. That's not happening. I mean, you, first of all, they don't have weights in any prisons, any federal prison. No federal prisons have weights anymore. You will go to the yard just to stretch, just to walk the track is what you're going to do. The new inmate probably hasn't made any friends yet, so they might just sit and watch a pickup game or the other prisoners work out. According to inmates who have been interviewed, the first day of recreation time is a little nerve-wracking. They normally just keep their heads down and wait for it to be over. I used to get on a, on a, like the, they, if they have a baseball field. So they have a baseball field and they'll have all the bleachers. I'd get out there, I'd have my jumpsuit, but again, myself was a little bit different because I usually knew somebody and they'd come up to me. Hey, Lord, what are you doing? What happened? Bob? Hey, let me give you shorts. And I'll give you a pair of shorts to wear, you know, so you can get out of that jumpsuit and not look like a fucking, uh, like a carrot in a in an apple field. You know what I mean? No, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna let you, depending on who you are. Me, I was lucky. I ended up knowing people in every prison. They would give me what they call a commissary bag. They'd take care of me. Of course, I took care of people. It's its own brotherhood system, if you want to call it that. But a new guy who doesn't know any of that would go out there in his orange jumpsuit. He would take, you know, if you have a jumpsuit on, it's one piece. You would take the top off and you'd have no shirt on. You'd be there like getting sun. You'd be wanting to get sun, you know. Oh man, I just want to get sun. Because you didn't get that. You were in county jail for X amount of time. After recreation time, it's shower time. New prisoners might skip this, but it's recommended that they keep good hygiene so they don't offend anyone else with their body odor, especially their cellmate. The new inmate grabs their towel and goes to the showers with the rest of the prisoners. Most accounts given by those who have been incarcerated say the shower process is nothing like the entertainment industry makes it out to be. But the new inmate is definitely on guard, especially if it's their first time in the prison system. When you got your bedroll, you had a towel in it too. I, didn't, I forgot to tell you that. But when you, when you got into the prison, first of all, there's no, most prisons don't have a shower time. It's usually open. If it's during the day, they might only have one shower open for the people who are coming off work. Now, after the 4 p.m. count, most prisons, all the showers are open. Now, every prison I was in all had separate showers, except Lewisburg, when you're in the holding area, that's when they have the four shower heads and you gotta go in the shower, and that is shower time. But that's when the guards, you know, say, you, you're a shower, didn't sell, that sell. They're running shit. It's not like it is uh, you just all go into a shower and there's people in the shower you see in, uh, in movies. Now, every state is different. Now, they have community showers uh, in some prisons. Like I said, Lewisburg, uh, uh, J Block in Lewisburg. But in the yard, they have separate showers. Now, there'll be a one shower. In Atlanta, we had doors, steel doors, so they could lock you in the shower. So there'd be three showers next to each other and walls separating them. Or they'll have like shower stalls in some prisons and they'll have three of them right there. And you know, they'll have the door so you can see the feet and you can see the person. And you go in there and you shower and you feel good. I love them. You know, you've been on a bus, you've been on a into intakes, you've been in a county jail, you've been in shitty shit. You're gonna get a shower. I used to get a shower right away. I would find out where the showers were right away. Wasn't they were closed? I'd say, hey man, can I, is your showers around here? Hell yeah, you take a shower. You want to feel good about yourself. Showers make you feel good. The prison knows that too. After shower time, the day is slowly coming to a close, and the prisoner's first 24 are almost over. There will be dinner, because regardless of the prison, inmates are almost always given some sort of meal at the end of the day. However, the time at which they're fed can vary based on the facility, and some of the meal times are pretty strange. What they're saying about meal times being strange here is not true, at least in the federal system. Yes, in county jails, I've seen meals at 3 in the morning, breakfast, 3 in the morning. I was in Miami-Dade County Jail, I had breakfast at 3 in the morning, lunch was like at 8.30 in the morning, in the morning, and dinner was like 3 in the afternoon. They fucked you up on purpose. Now, in all the prison, chow is after count. 
Every federal prison I told you has a 4 p.m. count. Every prison in the country. I don't know how many facilities there are. There's over 200,000 200, inmates. And they all have, uh, maybe it's lower now. Somebody told me it went down a little bit. Whatever. It's massive amounts of people. And at 4 p.m. count, they're all counted. They're all in their cells. After count, there'll be 20, 30 minutes, not even that. And it's chow time. So it's not... Uh, varying in times of day, maybe different prisons and states are different. Again, I'm not saying that. I'm going you giving you my knowledge of the Federal Bureau of Prison. In some prisons, dinner can be served as early as 3 p.m., meaning that inmates go hungry until breakfast the following morning, which can be as late as 11 a.m. Yeah, see that? I, I've never seen that. Now, they, they, I've seen them skip meals, but I've not seen them have a schedule like that. Uh, again, that would be at a county jail. If it's at any facilities that I, I've never heard of that, and, I, and I've been around the system for a long time. Depending on the facility, this may be their first meal of the day. The food probably isn't great. No, the food sucks. It's not just probably isn't great. I've never been to a facility said, oh, this food's great, man. I want to come back here. Oh, what a restaurant this would make. Nah, ain't happening. And for most first-time inmates, they will not have the resources necessary to order anything from the commissary during their first 24 hours. You're 100% right. And you get processed in the prison system after R&D until you go to your counselor. You have to go to a counselor the next day you're in prison. Not that day. You're going to see your counselor. He's going to do two things, three things. He's going to turn on your phone. And that's going to take maybe a week or two. Here's why. You have to give him a list of the numbers that you're allowed to call, that you want to call. Then they look at those numbers and make sure they're good, and then they confirm those numbers, and then it might take a week to get that uh, list in and approved. You have to get what they call a number. You get your own code number for the phones because they monitor them, and then you're going to be using that code uh, to make phone calls. You also have to put money on your account. Now, you don't just go to the facility. Even if you bring money, you never bring money, unless you're self-checking in. You don't bring money to a facility. It gets transferred from another facility. Now, it's in your account, but they have to activate your account. And also, if you have want people to send you money, you have to call somebody, and you try to get a call from the counselor. You tell them, hey, man, let me get a quick call. I just want to tell my wife where I'm at. I'm okay, and I want her to send money. Now, you already asked somebody on the yard, hey, how do you send money? Because now it's different. You have to send it. Used to be you used to have to send it to a uh, facility like Western Union or something of that nature. Now they have specific ways you have to send money into the Bureau of Prisons. Now, when I was in, you'd get money sent and you say, listen, get money to my account as quick as you can. If you got you know, your wife, said, listen, tomorrow morning, man, go put 300, 500 in my account. Here's, you know, they already know your number, 522-224-004, which is mine. They know your number. Now they know the facility and they know how to do it because they've been in the system. Your wife or spouse or friend or whoever it is knows how to do it and you send your money. That's why I often try to uh, uh, tell young people, uh, if you have somebody who went to prison, a friend, send them $10, send them $20. You don't have to send hundreds. I, oh, I didn't have a money. So write them a note. Just write him a note, say, hey, I hope, man, I hope you're good. I'll be here when you get out. You know, you were friends with him. You were construction worker buddies together. He fucked up and he's in jail. Hey, man, I hope, you know, we're, we're going to get your job when you get out. Hang in there. Here's 10 bucks. 10 bucks means something. It might mean that he can make a phone call. It might mean that he, he got the money quickest and he can make phone calls. He used to, when I was in prison, it used to cost $3.45 for 15 minutes. And that's it. Every, and the phone cuts off, it's another $3, $3.45. You make two phone calls, one to your wife, one to your kid. There's $7, over $7 gone already. I'm sure it's more expensive now. So my point being is you want people to just send you 10 bucks. And if you know somebody out there or have a family member, make sure you look it up and send them money. Please. So they're stuck with whatever is on the prison menu for the night. That brings up an awkward problem for a new inmate. At some point, they'll need to use the bathroom. And if prison food doesn't agree with them, it could be a messy process. This is unfortunate because the toilet is in the cell, and their cellmate will have nowhere else to go while the new prisoner does their business. It's probably best for the new inmate to ask their cellmate what their preference is for bathroom use. But regardless of how either person feels when you gotta go, you gotta go. 
Needless to say, the first time going in front of a new cellmate is going to be pretty awkward. That is true. Uh, but how that works, using the facilities or using the bathroom. You know, when you're in your cell, when you get assigned, or if you get assigned or you find a cell, if it's not during count, well, you, you gotta go, you gotta go, that, that is right. But if it's not during count, the cell is open and, and let's just say it's right after count. Or you might tell your cell, hey listen, after count I need the bathroom. He'll leave your cell and close it and wait out front. That's respect. And a lot of prisons, we used to put a towel. You know, they're not bar doors like you think. It's the big steel doors with like a window. You would put a towel over that window and, and people would know you wanted privacy. Whether you're jacking off or you're uh, using the bathroom. That's exactly what would happen. And you'd see guards pull those open and you'd be on the shit it. Either jack it off or not and they'd close the door. Like an asshole guard would do that, you know. But you had many of them. So you'd tell them, or if you're in the cell, locked in, and you have to use the bathroom. Your cellmate, now depending on the size of the cells, I was in very small cells, and, and, and it's like you're almost like sitting on each other, and you still gotta use the bathroom. The one dude, if he's on the bottom bunk or in the top bunk, he will turn towards the wall while you use the shitter. He'll turn towards the wall. And then now what you do is what they call courtesy flushes. In prisons, the, the, the toilet is, it's a suction toilet. You hit the button, you keep hitting the button as you're shitting. One, it takes the smell down and sh and people will also, they used to light matches, they don't even have matches anymore. And the sulfur uh, would burn and, to, and uh, take the smell out. But you courtesy flush, you keep flushing, getting the, 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 the shit and the sound down. And when you're shitting, you don't want to hear a guy shitting and all that, so you keep hitting the, the, the flusher. So now he's up there on the bunk, turned like this. You're in the back, shitting. You're hitting the button and sh and it's going down. Wipe your ass, shut it down, clean. If you have to pee, now there's no toilet seats, you know, like a seat that goes up and down. That's, that doesn't happen. It's a steel piece of steel, uh, round thing. You wipe that whole toilet with toilet paper. You clean it. You clean the top of that toilet bowl every time. You don't leave piss all over the place. You don't do that. That, that doesn't happen in prison. Many federal prison facilities do allow structured time for inmates after dinner. This means that the new inmate may find their end of the day filled by an activity assigned to them by the medical professional that assess them at intake. These activities could include Alcoholics Anonymous, religious meetings, anger management, or any number of other programs that are organized by the inmates themselves. <laughs> That's not happening. You are not, again, you are not assigned anything until you see your counselor, number one. You're going to end up seeing a psychologist. You're going to see on the yard. They don't do that in R&D. They don't do that. They had that wrong. And, and you can see how it's uh, uh, going down the video. No, you, they don't assign you anger management. They don't assign you uh, out, uh, whatever it is, AA or anything they're going to assign you. Uh, right now, you got to go see your counselor. Your counselor does that. Your counselor, when you are sent to a federal prison and you are sent to a unit, you are sent and you are assigned a team, they call it. You're assigned a unit manager who's the head of the whole unit. You're assigned a case manager who's the head of your case. And you're assigned a counselor. Now, the counselor is the one who handles your, your phone list, your visiting list. You can't get a visit unless they're approved by the counselor. And that a counselor has a list, they'll give you this. The first day they see you, and you will be seen within a day or two, sometimes not the next day. When you are seen by that counselor, he's gonna tell you all this. He's say, hey, here's your visitors list, here's your phone list, here's your stuff. Guys like me who've been in the system, I give that shit to the counselor before they even know it, before they even met me. I already knew from somebody else, hey Lawton, here's the forms, fill them out, Give them the counts in the morning. You want them in quick as you can because you want a visit or you want a phone call. If you're getting transferred from one prison to another, you have property. That's not there when you get there. What do you think this is? Like, you know, FedEx? No, they get there in two weeks. And then you can go down and get your property. And then you feel a little bit human in the yard or the prison. But before that, when you know your cell, whoever your cell is, you say, hey, listen, I could call this number, call my wife, tell her I'm all right. Tell her to send money, you know, this facility, she'll, or tell her, you have your girl tell her how to do it. 
perfect. Then at least you know, you'll see, you'll get money into your account pretty quick because it happens pretty quick. Once it's there, now you got money. Now you, you hope your, your, your phone list is approved as quick as you can. Now you have stuff to do. The newly incarcerated probably won't have joined a group at this point, and may be given the time to watch television or write a letter to whoever's waiting for them on the outside. Again, it would depend on the prison and the inmate themselves, but the first 24 hours are pretty lonely. Okay, first of all, let me tell you TVs. There's no TVs in your cells. Not in feds. There are some states. And to boot, they're not on volume. You have a transistor radio as a headphones, and you put it to that channel. So it's not yelling and they don't have to put that loud person and say, shut up, the show's on. No, there's no fights like that. The radio, your transistor radio that you buy, and you'll buy, you know what a transistor radio, a fucking transistor radio in 2007. I got out of prison, it blew my mind. It cost about 12 bucks, 15, but they used to charge us $80 for a transistor radio on the commissary. Now on that transistor radio, it have a channels. Now, each TV would have a channel. So you'll see people just looking at the TV, and of course, they got the radar. Now, there'll be four TVs up there. Now, of their radio, four TVs. They can just channel, go which one. Usually, the prison, first of all, the prison controls those shows. We don't. So you'll have a news show, sports show, and then you'll have a TV show, maybe a TV show or something like that. And it, depending, in some prisons, we have what they call t uh, rooms. You had TV room. So you'd have a sports TV room, a, uh, a news TV room, or in prison you'd have a black TV room, a white TV room, a Hispanic TV room, and a sports TV room. That's how it worked, guys. Just the way it is. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not telling you what the prison's gonna uh, say, or you can look up. I'm telling you how it really goes. So me, in the first day of prison, I would look it out and just try to stretch my legs and look what's on TV. Get a scope of the land. See what people are wearing. Who groups are grouping up. You know, you could just by looking and feeling, and people will know you know your shit when you're doing something like that. They most likely don't know anyone in the prison if it's their first offense, and people in prison are not always the most welcoming since they tend to have trust issues. After around 12 to 18 hours in the prison, the new inmate is sent back to their cell, where the door is locked, and they're left to stare at the underside of the bunk or the ceiling. The lights will remain on as the guards do their round and check to make sure everyone made it back to their cells okay. I love when they say they check to make it come back. That is not true. You're, you're locked in your cell and when they have count, they have count. That's when they check, period. You, you're already talking to your cellie already, unless he's a total asshole, and then you're not going to want to be with him anyway. Around 11 p.m., the lights go out and the echoes of whispers and snoring fill the cell block. The new inmate probably doesn't know their cellmate well enough to talk to them yet, so they lie in silence. You talk to your cellie, that is not true. You do end up talking to your cellie. Usually, I always did. You might get quiet, they might not want to talk too much. And you don't fucking talk forever, because it, then, it, then it's kind of like, you know, you're bothering the guy. You gotta feel him out. Again, it's reading people. He might want to talk, he might not want to talk. Maybe he's no good himself and he's worried. You know, you don't know at this point. But the only thing uh, I, I disagree with is you might not sleep much. Man, when I got into a locked cell in a new facility, I slept great. Because first of all, you're tired. You just were transferred. You just were on a bus or a plane for hours. And you are tired. You went out and walked maybe a little bit in the yard. And that's going to tire you out as well because you haven't done that. So all of those things are very important. Uh, but you will sleep, so don't think for a second you won't sleep. Sleep probably is a long way off, if it even comes at all. Yeah, that's not true. Many inmates recount their first night in prison as restless. They toss and turn, playing and replaying the events that led them to that moment through their mind. In some prisons, when it's lights out, inmates are to remain silent. But this is not true everywhere. The new inmate might end their first 24 hours in prison listening to conversations being held between cells or the sobs of prisoners who are slowly losing their minds. Regardless of which prison a new inmate finds themselves in, they probably won't sleep much that first night. They'll just lay in the darkness, waiting for the sun to rise the following day and the next 24 hours of their prison sentence to begin. No, again, I'm, I, I'm just agreeing with that. I slept. I uh, used to sleep good, or at least as good as you can, but boy, you, your always senses are high. Uh, you could hear some anything outside of normal uh, noise or something would knock me awake, I mean quickly, jump out of my bunk. When the doors start cracking in the unit, when I say crack, 
They, they weren't electric. They were what they call turnkeys. That means the guard had to walk around every door and turn them. And you'd hear him start right out. And boy, right when that start and you're up, I'm ready to go. So that was a little bit uh, off about that. You are, you know, you still, you, you are a little bit apprehensive. You don't know the facility yet. When I first went in the system, again, everything is done a little bit differently because they don't just throw you in the prison you're going to be in as a new guy the first day. You're going to R&D, you're going to a facility. If it's a state facility, you're going to a reception center. If it's the feds, you're going to be in the county jail for a while. You're going to be talking to other inmates who come and go. Kind of give you a little bit of the layout of the land so it's not like you're just thrown in without anything known. You'll know something unless you're no good. Now, if you're a pedophile and you've been bad and, you, and, and you've been really trying to keep under the radar, all that kind of shit, you're not going to know anything because you don't want to talk to anyone. And before you know it, Everybody's going to know who you are, and then you're fucked. Literally, you're done in both ways. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I know I, I like some of infographic stuff. This was pretty way off. A lot of this, I kept jumping at me and stuff like that. And you know, I tell it like it is. I very rarely call out people the way I, I did on these uh, two videos, but they had it pretty off on, on this whole prison stuff, uh, infographics. If anybody knows about this, it's somebody who's been there. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Please make good choices. Please help somebody every day. And stay tuned for our next video.